there's no question about it that August of 2023 was one of the lowest months within the GTA and Toronto real estate market. Not the lowest month, but it was very slow. Buyer demand and intrigue was very cool. The market was overall very cool and not much was happening for most people. Well, into September, I have noticed more activity across my listings in terms of the number of buyers coming to view properties I have on the market for my clients for sale. At the same time, I have also noticed more Toronto home buyers and GTA home buyers reaching out to me, wanting to book showings for properties, wanting to get the ball rolling on a pre-approval process, wanting to get actively involved in the market. So I thought, why not take a look at the numbers here? In combination with this, the Bank of Canada early in September announced that they're not increasing interest rates to the surprise of many people, including myself. I particularly thought in September they would increase rates, but the Bank of Canada announced that they would not. And is this in any way connected to the fact that I've noticed more activity across my listings in September and I've noticed more buyer demand in September? Well, we're going to stop going based upon my experience and kind of assess the numbers in a more quantitative fashion as opposed to a qualitative fashion. On this channel, I always combine the qualitative of my everyday experience as a Toronto and GTA real estate agent with the quantitative. But in today's video, we're going to take a look at the hard cold numbers with regards to showings across the GTA and offers. As always, hello everyone. This is Sam from Sibiri 6 Real Estate, a Toronto real estate agent actively working within the GTA and Toronto real estate market. If you're new to the channel, welcome on this channel. We like to discuss all things having to do with the Toronto and GTA real estate markets, buyer advice, seller advice, market reports, and market reviews, pre-construction previews, property tours, and so much more. So if you find any of this content informative and so much more, so if you find any of this content informative, feel free to subscribe or get in touch for more. Or if you have any further questions with regards to the Toronto and GTA real estate market, my contact information once again is in the description box. So there's no question about it. August was a very, very slow month within the GTA real estate market. Properties were staying on the market for a long time. And in some cases still are on the market actually properties were not getting that many showings now they were actually getting more showings than the august previous on a year over year basis but compared to not even the peaks of market forget about that compared to the highs of 2023 even so far properties were not getting uh, that much foot traffic now of course as always i have to clarify and i hope this goes without saying that this is on a general market level right of course if there was a listing that was really good in a low inventory community probably got a a lot of foot traffic but i'm saying overall at a general level so let's take a look at august numbers first quickly to establish the grounds here and i'm going to actually refer to one of my favorite analytics tools for listings and showings one of the only ones that i know of which is broker bay now one thing off the bat i'll mention is that broker bay is not exhaustive in terms of the analytics it only accounts for listings that go through broker bay however i would probably have to venture to say that 80 percent of the brokerages that do showings and offer registration that data is within broker bay so it does account for a lot of the market not all of the market but a majority of the market furthermore broker bay is actually not a good tool for price or more market oriented stuff like days on market all that type of stuff but for the internal analytics in terms of offers and showings it's actually quite good so every tool has its purpose and the broker bay for me is the best way to determine how many showings are happening in a given community for what property type and how many offers are being placed so so with that preamble out of the way let's take a look so here I have open in front of me the numbers for uh, September across the GTA, the entirety of the GTA, not the city of Toronto, condo, semi-detached, townhomes, and detached properties, all property types. We see that from the time range of August 1st to August 21st, because right now at the time of recording of this video, it is September 22nd, so we don't have a full day of data for the 22nd, so we're going to be taking a look at it for September from the 1st to 21st as well. We see that in the same period in August, there were a total of 74,000 showing and 4,402 offers. Now, once again, this is not exhaustive. I want to make sure that I mention that this is not exhaustive, but it's very, very close to capturing all the data. And as is typical, uh, the number of showings really peaked in the middle of the month in August, right? We see that the most showings in a day was 5,154 uh, for any given property on the market. And, you know, things start to really taper off towards the end of the month with the small bump occurring 
uh, towards the end of the month, actually. And that's the weekend, I believe, uh, the 19th and 20th. Well, of course, one can surmise that it's due to the fact that, uh, you know, the summer was coming to an end and uh, people were anticipating another rate hike potentially in September. I was for a fact, you know, I predicted there will be another rate hike on September 6th. Of course, that didn't happen. And maybe a lot of people rushed in to see some stuff on the market. And we kind of see the same type of pattern when we take a look at a daily view of the number of offers being placed in August of 2023. We see that for the most part, things did peak in the middle of the month once again, around the 14th and 15th. And offers were also being made, uh, you know, in the early uh, days of the month, you know, like for instance, first of the month was 316, so on and so forth, 251 on the third. And we also once again see this quick uptick towards the end of the month uh, with 334 offers on the last day. All in all, 4,400 offers were placed according to Broker Bay Analytics in the month of August. August. Now let's take a look at September because we know where we were with regards to August. 74,000 showings, give or take total in the GTA for properties for sale and around 4,400 offers. So now we have open in front of us data from September 1st to September 21st. And we see in total there's 77,000 showings and about 4,200 offers. So the number of showings have gone up, but offers have actually declined 200 or you know less than 200 to be exact but about you know around 170 to 180. so buyer intrigue has definitely picked up slightly to the tune of four to six percent on a month over month basis and part of this is seasonal however according to the broker bay analytics buyers are placing less offers albeit by a minimal amount once again around 170 180. and as i alluded to earlier in the video i've noticed at least from my own personal experience on the ground as an active seller's agent and buyer's agent, once the Bank of Canada announced early in September that they're not touching the interest rates, once again, much to my surprise, showings and activity across my listings on the selling side picked up substantially and buyer intrigue in terms of buyers reaching out to me to help them in terms of purchasing a property also picked up as well. Now, this is once again, somewhat seasonal. August is usually the slowest month of the year in terms of real estate, maybe sometimes December is slower. And in terms of assessing where things are going, what's well, going to mainly have to do with what the Bank of Canada decides for their next upcoming announcements. There's actually two announcements remaining for the uh, entire year of 2023. They're going to make an interest rate decision slash announcement in October. I believe October 7th, if I'm not mistaken, and another announcement coming towards the end of December. So putting aside the one in December, let's focus on the one in October. If the Bank of Canada by chance announces that they're keeping rates again paused at these current levels, I would, I would not be shocked whatsoever. In fact, I would expect the market to keep picking up a bit more in terms of buyer intrigue and buyer demand and buyer competition will it all of a sudden break out into an explosive hot sellers market no chance whatsoever i do not see that happening i do believe things are going to shift from a buyer's market to more of a fair and balanced market still favoring buyers but not favoring buyers as much as the august conditions or as of right now september that is if the bank of canada does not increase rates in october if they do decide to increase rates in october i believe the market conditions will decline a bit more they're going to probably revert back to what we were seeing early september and late august in terms of what has been the impact on prices well i'm not going to assess price data in the middle of the month sometimes i do it for particular communities like downtown north york midtown or municipalities such as mississauga or municipalities in durham however for the entire of the gta i'm going to wait until the month's end to assess all price trends but i would have to venture to say from what i'm seeing on the ground and reviewing the market on a daily basis and looking at particular areas in terms of price trends prices are probably still flush with august maybe minimally up but overall i probably have to say for most property types and most areas it's still pretty much even with august prices have not shot up or declined much further as well however i might be wrong and once we assess the numbers at the end of the year however i might be mistaken and once we assess the numbers towards the end of the month uh early october we might see something different anyways that is it for today's video a quicker video than normal thank you very much for watching let me know if you have any further questions with regards to topics discussed in this video or topics discussed in previous videos stay tuned for more as always stay safe thank you very much